So the Browns advance to three and one in what might feel like the most unsatisfactory way possible. But although it feels like this, although it feels unsatisfactory, I'm going to try to tell you why this probably is one of the most satisfactory victories that the Browns have had in quite a while and why the way that the Browns won this game is more important than the way that they have won any other game throughout this season. What am I talking about? We'll find out. But before I get into that, I want to make sure I give a shout out to the Patreon.com dog check tier members. And also, I want to make sure you guys hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. If you're wondering why the setup is different for this video, it's because I just recorded it after doing my live watch party. And if you want to join me for my live watch party on game day, then please hit that subscribe button. Ding that notification bell so you don't miss it. I'm doing this next week for the Chargers game, so make sure you're locked in for that. But now, let's get into the video. And before I forget, I want to make sure I give a shout out to the Patreon.com dog check tier members I'm going to start with. Michael Matik, Michael Morales, Mark Kahn, Max Haymaker, Drake, Nick Merrick, Mike Labra, Wes and Megan, DA, and Jay. Greg Ehlers, Austin Bolin, Easley Bash, Joe Hart, Gabriel Wilson, Fred Pratt III, David Valtiar, Relentless Buck, Chunt, Rex Kaufman, Kevin Johnston, Cleveland Cart, Matt H., Sign Sheets, Gemini, Leon Freeman, Fight Dirty 74, Yo-Yo, Matt Lloyd, Paul Wilcox, Hundo Magnifico, Kyle Stouffer, Lukey from Munich, Deveroff, Jay Guy 101, Musty Taco, Joe Bobby, Brad Cowboy, Dylan W., James McGinley, Arendal, Chad, Gimme, David Malinato, Dylan Hill, Josh Bendor, Jalil Salim Jr., Mark M., Stuart Moore, or Cleveland BCI Robert Jermaine Jr., Dave Mike May, Andrew Hirsch, Curtis Bear, Batman, Barack Kumar, John Albert, Beerman069, Masayua, Buzz Roland, James Nemo, Mac House, Reeve Hertz, Philip Wilcox, and Marie River, Sean Barron, Gagos Pisano, Corporal Nick Lopez, Dom Gazzola, Nick Nasty, Ian Whitaker. Colin 2 and 6, Christian, Dave Strong, Michael Stone, Billy, Moose Gentry, Austin Z, Mark Burnett II, Andre Griffin, Otis Wolf, Dog Pound, Kai, Lydia, Jesus Serrano, Alexander Davis, Chris Phones, Pick Town Browns Backer, Max Nilakenko, Mark Khan, Max Aldojo, and Water Bear Marketing. Okay, so let's get it out the way. There is no excuse for the offense and how they perform today. There is not specifically one person to blame, even though one person is going to take the front of the blame because he plays quarterback. I mean, rightfully so. I mean, he did not play good. He played awful. This might have been one of his worst games ever and definitely his worst game since 2019. It's obviously Baker Mayfield, right? The offense was atrocious and it seemed to melt down towards the end here, right? Um, Baker had one of those games where he just needed the game to end. He was missing guys. He was all over the place, just missing all over the place. It was very uncharacteristic of him. Um, so that is that, right? We know the offense didn't play well. Even the running game, right? I know the numbers are going to look good with the running game, but look at the execution in the red zone um, when they blew a lot of those opportunities to score the football early and later on in this game and tell me that you feel like the running game played to their standard. I really don't think so. I know Nick Chubb had 100 yards. I know if you average out his yards per carry, they were good. But when their back was against the wall and they needed three yards in the red zone, they couldn't get it with the run game. So I'm not excusing any aspect of this team. Maybe Rashard Higgins gets a pass. Um, but other than that, you know, um, I, I just I struggle to find anybody who played well offensively today. So the quarterback was awful. I felt like the offensive line was not great, especially the two tackles. Jedrick went out later in this game. Honestly, he needs to miss a couple of games because he's just been playing way, way too injured the last couple of weeks. Um, your tight ends, Austin Hooper was atrocious in this game. He dropped like three passes here. Um, Odell was good, but he didn't get the ball at all just because when Baker did target him, he was all over the place with the targeting there. Um, so, you know, it's even hard to give anybody credit for playing well to this week. Kareem Hunt and... Rashard Higgins, literally the only two players that I'm going to say played well. The kicker played well. Um, so those are the three people who contributed to offensive points on the board that played well. Everybody else, mm, not up to their standard. Well, whether you think Nick Chubb had a good game, it's really not up to Nick Chubb's standard to barely get to 100 yards um, with 20 carries and then, you know, not score any touchdowns, especially when the team needed it. Uh, so, no, I'm not going to give anybody else a good game here. The offense was atrocious, so that's out the way. 
The good news is, is that when we know this offense is not bad, we know that this offense is good. We know that Nick Chubb's going to have a big game sooner or later. We know that things are going to come together. We know that Baker Mayfield's not going to miss people by 40 yards every play here. So we know that these things aren't going to continue on forever with this offensive unit. It's just a temporary thing, which means that you quite possibly had your worst offensive performance versus a good football team on the road, and your defense was so good, so dominant, that it didn't matter how awful your offense was today on the road versus a good team. That absolutely, 1,000%, means something. That is not nothing there. And the defense was excellent. Literally, you could pick a name out of a hat in this defense and point out five different plays they made to help this team win this game because that's how good the individual efforts were. That's how good the coaching effort was. Joe Woods, somebody who, again, when we're com- when we're complaining about the offense right now or if we're going to freak out about the offense, I think the, how people reacted to Joe Woods early in this season should give us some perspective, right? People wanted Joe Woods fired after Kansas City. People wanted Joe Woods fired after the Texans game, and people were Barely giving Joe Woods credit after the defensive performance uh, versus the Bears. And he came out here versus a really good offense. Thielen, um, not Diggs, but uh, Jefferson, Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Cook, and completely shut them down. So if you're here, you know, going to freak out about the offense, keep that in mind, right? We thought this defense was so bad two weeks ago. And now we're like the defense is on top of the world right now. Things can change. We know the offense is good. The offense is going to be fine. But the defense is the story of the day here, right? Miles Garrett. I don't think he. I think he had one sack um, when he was triple <laughs> when he was triple covered, or however you want to describe it. Three offensive linemen were on him. He got a sack here. He was in the backfield all day. He was a monster in the run game. Miles Garrett. He's woken up. He looks like defensive player of the year quality. He's at like six and a half sacks already. Yeah, Miles Garrett's something to get excited about. Um, Jadavion Clowney had this scary moment here where he went down. It looked like he hurt his knee or something. It turned out to be his hip. He came back in the game later, so he's not hurt. Hopefully he's not hurt. He played well once he came back into the game, too. Um, And he got a lot of pressure. He got some TFLs in the run game. And I believe he got a sack. I don't know if he got a sack. I know he was there consistently all game. If there's any questions about what Jadavion Clowney is going to bring to this defense, those questions have been answered. He is excellent. Um, Malik Jackson had his first really good game here with the Cleveland Browns. I felt like Malik McDowell played his role quite well here. Um, JOK. We don't talk about JOK, even though it seems like we talk about JOK all the time, but I don't think we talk about him enough. He is excellent. He is excellent in the run game. He is phenomenal in the pass game. He is somebody who has the great instincts of a linebacker. He's always there. And, like, it's one thing for a linebacker to be around the ball. He's always there first, making the play behind the line of scrimmage or at the line of scrimmage. That's how you know you have a great linebacker. JOK is everything I thought he would be coming out of Notre Dame. He's getting more and more playing time. And as he continues to get more playing time, the defense continues to play better. He is truly, um, he has the potential to truly be a game changer on the level of a Miles Garrett, where you're talking about, you know, somebody who could be one of the best players in their position because of the special tools that he has. And the Browns are so lucky that they were able to get him in the second round that the rest of the NFL just messed up on that one, let him slide to you. And now you have a really deep uh, DB room and you have a really deep linebacker room because JOK, he's phenomenal phenomenal i cannot wait to look at the all 22 because what i just saw from the broadcast angle was phenomenal today uh malcolm smith i feel like people don't give him the respect that he deserves uh he played really well sioni taki taki somebody who i also don't feel people give the respect that he deserves played specifically really well in the run game it's coming together for this defensive unit especially at front seven it's looking real good 
They're getting really great individual efforts out there, and it's making a world of difference versus a very good offense here. Um, and then we go to the secondary. Denzel Ward, excellent game today. Made an excellent pass breakup. I mean, look, the defense had to be perfect today in order for the Browns to eke this out as pathetic as the offense looked. Like, the Browns squeeze seven extra points out of here from uh, a couple of field goals and a two-point conversion. That is the only reason they got 14 points. So the, the offensive performance after that first drive or the second drive, whenever they scored in the first half, awful. Just flat awful. Non-existent. They didn't show up today at all. So the defense, it was literally on their back the entire game. Every single drive, right? If the, if the Vikings would have scored at any point in this second half, the game would have been over for this team the way the offense was playing. And it still didn't matter. The defense showed up every time their name was called, and I just feel like we need to put some respect on that. Greedy Williams got an interception today, played really well, and now that you have some confidence, right, that Greedy can go out there and play really well at a boundary corner position, Greg can go out there in the slot if you really need him to. So can Denzel, um, and so can Troy Hill. You have four now really good defensive backs in Troy Hill, uh, Greg Newsom, Denzel Ward, and Greedy Williams. And I think you can get real creative with how you use those guys there. Grant Delpit is somebody who came in for an injured Ronnie Harrison. Played excellent. Played absolutely excellent. He looks like the Grant Delpit. We hoped he would be coming out of LSU. The Grant Delpit that we were betting on, the 2018 version of him. He looks quick. He looks explosive. He looks like he's able to plant and get off of that um torn Achilles foot that he has so he looks like he's ready to go here so the defense at every level of the game and literally every possession after that first one was a hundred percent excellent for the Browns offense I don't think it was really the Vikings defense that was causing the Browns any trouble I think it was the Browns getting in their own way, right? Bad penalties, um, bad blocking, injured players blocking, Baker missing people by like three miles, um, you know, not great execution in the red zone in the run game, just the Browns getting in their own way. I don't think this was a um, – I, I don't think the defense for the Vikings played bad necessarily, but I don't think this was a um, – the reason the Browns struggled was because of anything that the Vikings were doing. I think it was just the Browns getting in their own way, much like they did the last couple of weeks. But defensively for this Browns team, like they were just making plays. I mean, look at a lot of these pass breakups that the Browns got in the second half. They were good throws, good balls. Like, you know, they just were getting in front of them, the interceptions. The Browns defense made plays to stop this Vikings defense offense, my bad. And that's why you should be excited. You have a team here whose strength is offense, whose strength is the running game, whose strength is the play-action pass game, whose strength is everything on that side of the ball. And even when that side of the ball shows up or doesn't show up, lays a complete turd on the turf, right? A complete turd on the turf, on the road versus a good team. You're good enough to win that game because you have an elite de or a defensive unit that came out and played elite today. That's What's important about this, right? The win is not in, insignificant that you won this game on the road because there are a thousand other Browns teams that have existed that could not have done what this Browns team was able to do here, which is get to three and one despite a horrid offensive performance. And that's really what you should take away. You have a defense that's good enough to win you a game here. That's important down the stretch. We know that offense is going to win a couple games down the stretch here. We know that they're going to do their job um, and show up eventually because we know that offense is very good. It's no fluke there. Um, but the defense showing up like this, this strong against an opponent that's pretty good, that's something that should get you very excited as a Browns fan. We know the offense is going to come back. But this defense showing up like that, we didn't know how good this defense was. We didn't know what to look at this defense as. And if they're going to show up like that, and if this is the level that they can play at on any given Sunday, then the Cleveland Browns have a really, really, really good football team. And especially once this offense gets it back together. And remember, right, the offense looked terrible after they played Pittsburgh last year um, in week six. And then 
proceeded to come out next week with a week after and put up some of their best performances that they had you like in Browns history, right? Baker threw like five touchdowns the next game. So I have no lack of confidence that this offense is going to be back to normal pretty soon here. Um, but this defense playing this well, I hope that's not a mirage because if it's not, we got some serious high hopes to have for this team because that – that is just something that came out and shocked me. I know that when the offense plays bad, everybody's going to focus on that, but don't fall into that trap. Give the defense their flowers, right? This is a two-sided game, offense, defense, special teams, and sometimes the other side has to win the ball, win the ball game for you, and the defense most certainly came out here and showed up and won this game for the Cleveland Browns, and that deserves not to be ignored, especially when a lot of people, a lot of people, both nationally – both fans, you know, both uh, local, all, all kinds of people were calling for Joe Woods' job two weeks ago. This defensive performance does not deserve to be ignored if that's going to be the case. But that's my thoughts on this game. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But again, guys, thank you for watching. I want you guys to have a great day. Have a good night.